this video will go through four more examples of equilibrium problems that need both equilibrium of forces as well as equilibrium of torques. So the first one is a tower crane that's lifting a, an air conditioning unit and we need to know what the counterbalance is. The second is a corkscrew. Uh, we need to know just how hard you have to pull up on that corkscrew to get the cork out. The third is a woman holding the pole. And the fourth is um, conditions for tipping, which is an interesting problem in itself. Okay, so you can go back and look at the questions and try to do them yourselves, but I'll go through and do them one by one here. So number one is the crane. So we take, remember you always have to def define your axis of rotation. If nothing is moving, you can put your axis of rotation anywhere you want, but there's usually a pretty good place to put it. Like for example, the support of the crossbar there is a good one. Okay, so the air conditioning unit is hanging here. The mass is 2,800 kilograms. And the distance from this center bar out to that mass is 7.7 .7 meters. And then the question is, where do we put the counterweight over here? So this is an unknown distance x. And it has a mass of 9,500 kilograms, so much heavier, so it can be much closer to the axis of rotation than the refrigerator. And so this is our axis of rotation. Now, once you've decided the axis of rotation, you have to stick to it for the whole problem. Okay, so now we identify which forces create clockwise torques and which forces create counterclockwise torques. So you put your finger on the axis of rotation. Imagine what would happen if this 2,800 kilogram mass were to allow that beam to rotate. Well, this would clearly be a clockwise torque. So that's, we mark that clockwise. And this about, you put your finger here, this is gonna to try to make it go the opposite way. So this is a counterclockwise torque. Okay. And conditions for equilibrium are clockwise torques equal counterclockwise torques. If you use the equation like this, you never have to use negatives. You will see some people, they will define a clockwise torque as negative and a counterclockwise torque as positive. And that's because if you take your right hand, curl your fingers clockwise, your thumb is down into the page and that's defined to be the direction of the torque vector and that's a negative vector. But we don't have to worry about the vector nature here. We just have to worry about balancing these. So it means that member torque is equal to lever arm times perpendicular force. And that's torque. Okay, so lever arm, 7.7 .7 meters times perpendicular force, 2,800 kilograms times G for a force. And that would have to equal X, we don't know what the lever arm is, times the 9,500 kilogram counterweight times G. Now notice how you don't need to worry about what the actual force is because G is gonna cancel here. And the distance you have to put the counterweight is just 7.7 .7 times 2,800 divided by 9,500. And that comes out in meters. And the answer to that is 2.3 meters. So it only has to be 2.3 meters away from that pivot um, to balance because it's a much bigger counterweight than it is load. Okay, number two is the corkscrew. So we're worried about the corkscrew itself. We're not worried about the cork. So this is the corkscrew. It's being supported here on the edge of the bottle and it's being pulled up here by the person. So this is the force from the person. And it doesn't just go flying up because it's got the screw itself is embedded in the cork. So the cork is actually pulling down on the screw. The screw is pulling up on the cork, 
but the cork is pulling down on the screw. So this is a downward force on the corkscrew, F due to the cork. Okay, so we'll put our pivot here at the end where it's supported on the bottle. So this is like the, the bottle here. So this is the piece of the bottle and it goes down like that. So we'll call this O. So it means the force from the cork, that's clockwise, trying to pull it down. And this force from the person is a counterclockwise. Okay, so now we just need the distances. Distance out from the support point to the screws, it's really small. And it's on the picture, it's kind of hard to see on the picture, that's nine millimeters. So that's just nine millimeters. And then from the screw to the point of application of the force that the person puts is 70. Now that is not the lever arm for that force. Remember, we always have to measure to the axis of rotation. So the lever arm for this person force has to go all the way from, so this would be 79 millimeters from the axis of rotation to the point of application of the force. Okay, so once again, clockwise torques equal counterclockwise torques. Clockwise equal counterclockwise. So nine millimeters times the force on the cork due to the cork. That's not on the cork, that's on the cork screw. Must equal 79 times the force of the person. Okay, now we're told the force that the cork requires, it's anywhere from 200 to 400 newtons. So if we put in 200 newtons, then we wanna calculate this, just how hard do you have to pull? 200 newtons is quite a lot. If you divide by 10, that's like 20 kilograms. That's like lifting 20 kilograms, which, whew, that's a heavy duty lift. So the force that the person has to exert, but you've got this tremendous mechanical advantage because you're way further away from that pivot point. So it would be nine times 200 divided by 79. And so that would equal uh, 22.8 Newtons. So say 23, well, 22.8 Newtons. So that's nothing at all. That's not very much force at all. You do have to make sure you hold the bottle down though, or the whole thing will come flying off the table. So that's for a 200 Newton force. If you put in 400 Newtons, then of course you um, increase that to about 45.6 Newtons. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is the woman holding the pole. So here she is. She's got her hands on this pole. And we wanna know just what each hand has to do. Now remember we're facing the woman. So in fact, this is her left hand and this is her right hand. And the distance between her hands is 32 centimeters. This is 32. Oh, now it is important. She has to have her hand on the end of the pole. So that's the end of the pole. So I shouldn't have drawn this here. Because the center mass of the pole, it says a uniform pole, the force of gravity is here due to the pole. Fg pole is equal to the mass of the pole, which is 10 kilograms times 9.8. Newtons per kilogram. So we've got 98 Newtons here. Okay, now the question is which way are the forces on these hands? Up or down or how are you can figure that out? Well, think about the right hand just being stationary. If, if you just put the, doesn't matter what the right hand is doing, but let's put our axis of rotation here on the right hand. So let this be axis of rotation. Pole isn't moving, so we could put it anywhere. We could do this argument on the other side. Okay, so that's our O. Now the pole is exerting a clockwise torque about that right hand. So clearly the left hand 
has to exert a counterclockwise torque, which means the left hand has to pull up. So this would be the force from the left hand. It would be up, and then that would be our counterclockwise torque. So right off the bat, we can calculate that. Clockwise equals counterclockwise. So from the axis out to the left hand is, well, we'll go to the pole. It's a uniform pole and it's two meters long. So this must be one meter from the axis of rotation out to the gravity vector. <clears throat> okay, so lever arm, one meter times force, 98 Newtons must equal lever arm 0.32 meters times the force of the left hand. And so this means that the force of the left hand, which is up, is 98 divided by 0 0.32, which is 306 Newtons or approximately 310 Newtons. And that's up. Okay, now the left hand, if that's up, that's a bigger force up than down. We can use up equals down here. The right hand must be exerting a force down. So if we go back to our pole here, this has to be down because this is up at 310 and the weight of the thing is down at 98. And 310 is a lot bigger than 98. So this is the force of the right hand. And up equals down. And so the 310 up must equal the 98 plus the force of the right hand. So the force of the right hand is 310 minus 98 which is 212 or 210 newtons and that's down so this one's down okay so pick up a stick or something and just play with that and you'll see that's how your hands have to do it or the pole will move Okay, that's number three. Number four is this tipping truck. So what's the deal about tipping? This is the deal about tipping. Let's draw this. Things will tip when the force of gravity vector goes past, it's called the base of support or actually the pivot point. Now that would sit there, that's just fine. But if you tip it over more, see it's steeper here like this, and your force of gravity vector is way out here, and this is your axis of rotation. Well, there is nothing to, remember there's only one force here, the normal force, um, you don't have to worry about the the normal force because we'll do that in a sec but this if the, as soon as this gravity vector comes past this point this is going to tip and this won't tip that's the limit now this is why tall things tend to tip and, and squat things don't because think about if you have a pretty steep an angle and something is lying like this well, the force of gravity vector is way back here. Imagine how huge that incline has to be to get something like that to tip. Whereas if you've got a tall, narrow object like this, and your force of gravity is in this geometric center, look how easy that is to tip. You don't have to tip it very much at all to get it to, to go past this point. Okay, so let's... Uh, go back to this truck and see what the angles are and how you get these distances. So this is theta. And then this is the truck. And here's our, well, I didn't draw that very well, but here's a gravity vector has to go past that point there. 
And so we make some triangles here. Let's do a triangle like this. This we'll call Y, this we'll call X. Y is halfway up and X is halfway along. Now, this angle theta here, remember these guys are equal. This one equals this one. And they're both right angle triangles. So this must be theta. And so if you look at that triangle, you see that tan theta is X over Y. Okay, so all you have to know is how big the truck is. Doesn't matter what the weight is, doesn't matter. It does have to be uniform though. So X is halfway along. So they give you the dimensions of the truck. The truck is 2.4 meters wide. So they tell you that this is 2.4 meters, which means X is half of that. So X is 1.2 meters. And they tell you how tall the truck is. It's a four meter tall truck. This is four meters. So Y must be two meters. <clears throat> and so tan theta is 1.2 divided by two. So this leads to theta of 29 degrees.